So Contralto is uh, uh, an Italian game collective born in Milan, and I will introduce properly all the uh, founders. Uh, but before that, we'll show just a video so you can have an idea of what it's all about. That was really cool. Also, there was something mine in that, that video as well, so I'm really glad about it. Thank you, guys. So, uh, go on. Uh, let's, let's talk about what, what you're doing. This is super interesting. Thank you. Please welcome Contralto Game Collective on stage. Hey guys, thanks for coming. So if we give us two minutes, we'll just go around and do a quick 20 seconds presentation for person just so you know who is who. And then we'll tell you about this new project that we started as a collective. Do you want to start, Paolo? Hi everyone, I'm Paolo Taille. Uh, I've been making games professionally since uh, like four or 10 years. And I'm a long-time collaborator with uh, Santa Ragione, with, uh, with, with I made uh, Mirror Moon EP, and I also ported Photonica for a lot of platforms. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I still collaborate with them, with uh, all the new games, and we're making new cool things which we are about to... Layers? Yeah. He made layers? Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> he made the layers. Uh, 
<laughs> game design tool together with Federico, actually, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Matteo Pozzi. Uh, I'm one half of uh, We Are Muesli uh, in the studio from Milan, Italy, together with Claudia. And uh, we make uh, mostly narrative games about uh, cultural, historical, uh, and artistic topics. And I mainly take care of the narrative part of, uh, of the game as a, a game writer, basically. Um, uh, my name is Pietro Righiriva and I founded the independent game studio Santa Ragione in 2010 with my longtime friend and colleague uh, Nicola Tedeschi, who is also part of the collective, but not here today. And so since that year, we started releasing a number of commercial and non-commercial projects that started with a board game called Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. Then we made some B2B games, we made a game for Pitchfork Music, we made a game about the 2013 Italian elections called Final Candidation, and a number of other experimental things. And we've also did a series of events that you've seen up there called Lunar Arcade back then, and now we are coordinating a new event. It's called the Milano Game Festival, which I'll maybe talk about it later a little bit more. And historically, we've been working with Paolo on the games, and uh, Nicolo has usually been our art director for all the games. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hi, everybody. My name is Claudia Molinari. I'm the other half of We Are Muesli. We, um, as Matteo said, we started in 2013, and um, part of our uh, background is not actually coming from game design. So I think it was a nice, um, we were lucky not to come from directly from game design because we could uh, explore video games in, uh, in our own way, which led us to do like things like uh, our first our, our first project called the Cave Cave dos Videt, which was like a, a project, uh, a video game about the art of Geronimus Bosch, and also explore other themes that uh, are really dear to us. So, um, what else can I say? Like, uh, um, I was not born a game designer, and uh, I was not born a gamer, and uh, I tried to bring my own personal and uh, my own like uh, experience into into this field, uh, which is then came up to with all this this guy here decided to group together and become a collective. Hi everyone, I'm Anna Maria Andrea Vitali, and uh, I just completed my PhD in design, where my research was like focused on designing and making research on. Uh, uh, the expressive qualities of video games, so how video games are using interactivity and gameplay, interactive storytelling to create meaningful play experience beyond traditional uh, games. And recently I've also created the Art Plus Feminist Wikipedia editatory event uh, in Milan, focusing the event actually on the creation of new uh, article on Wikipedia about uh, uh, artists uh, and women working on video games. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Nicola Sala, and I'm a musician, sound designer, and graphic designer. As a musician, I uh, collaborate with Santa Ragione since their establishment, so I work with a lot uh, in a lot of their projects and titles. And as a graphic designer, I work in software development since 2010. And uh, recently, the last year, I started my own company, which name is uh, Studio Frangore. And uh, we have only one project for now, <laughs> but we hope to do a lot more. And the project is Potion Explosion. And uh, others will come out soon. Um, also, part of the collective is, um, part of this collective is Marina, that some of you, Ooh. everybody, yeah, Marina is over there. We wanted to have her here with us, but she said no. I think uh, I think it's better. She has a lot on her plate. Apparently. Yeah, and uh, and she can introduce herself. Maybe not now, but yeah. <laughs> and another important member of of the collective is Flaminia, 
uh, with Grimaldi. She lives in Rome and uh, she's a 3D artist. And then I think you know Alex better than Fla I do. Fla actually. Flaminia is working currently on a super secret and announced project, so we can really talk about what she's working on. But she did all the 3D art for Wills of Aurelia as well, so she's a deep main environment artist for that project. And also Alex. A final. Yeah, last but not least, uh, Alex Camilleri, uh, Italian uh, game maker, uh, currently residing in Malmo, Sweden. Uh, he, yeah, he, ma he made uh, this game, uh, you briefly saw it in the trailer, called uh, Memoir and Code, Reissue, uh, as a solo developer, and now he's working with Frictional Games in, in Malmo, Sweden. So, and that's the 10 of us, right? And Nicolò Tedeschi, of course, that uh, Pietro, Pietro already mentioned before as the other third of Santa Ragione. We are almost a football team, actually. Yeah, we so miss one. We miss a goalkeeper. We, we miss the goalkeeper, yeah. but perhaps we will Think find it. Making, making proposals for you. Yeah, for a goalkeeper, we are accepting proposals. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah. Um. So what's Contralto about, basically? You, you, you saw in the trailer uh, some of the um, projects that we've been uh, working on uh, individually for the past uh, few years uh, or, with our, or with our studios, with our companies that every one of us somehow runs. And um, now uh, what we do and what we would like to do uh, since uh, the, the collective is still like kind of newly born. Uh, we, mm, uh, since I mean, w w when was w when we when did January. we officially Offici yeah, okay. unofficially was in no, unofficially was born in Paris because all the all the strange and uh, uncool things sometimes are born in very beautiful city. So we were born in Paris in a karaoke. That's why we are called Contralto, which is like, um, at, yeah, uh, Paris at Indicate. Um, it happened during the last year that for one reason or another, we kept on stumbling to each other in all these events, international events. And uh, it was like, oh, look, there is Peter from Santa Ragione here at Cologne. Or who? Oh, there is uh, Nicolò. Who? There is Andrea. So we kept on meeting each other, always on the same international spots. And um, so we shared a lot of beers, and we shared a lot of dinners, and we shared a lot of... Um, a lot of very deep moments, even sometimes, you know, when you when you talk about important things like publishers and you know you you have those kind of headaches and heartbreaks and so we shared a little bit of of um, past together it's at some point in Paris when we were singing wearing funny mask and it, it, trust me this is how it happened we decided that maybe it was time also for Italy to have a collective um, an identity of, why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, stop. I'm, 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 I look, am I, am I look like a person that knows what she's doing, but I'm, sometimes I could be very shy. So, yeah, but uh, going, b going back to what we do yeah. and what we want to do, it's mainly four things, right? Uh, it's research and production of new games collectively, uh, teachings like uh, workshops and courses already had a few experience already as Contralto in running some specific workshops and more about that later and organizing events those are the four main uh, things and uh, that we want to uh, and challenges we'd like to tackle as a, as a game collective so starting with uh, research that, that basically comes uh, um, from our individual experiences uh, in uh, uh, specific uh, uh, topics of uh, game design or game development. Uh, um, and uh, a couple of examples that you saw in the trailer is, for instance, Pietro is uh, having this uh, project, uh, which is called the Rejecta, right? Oh, that's um, not in the trailer. Yeah. Spoilers. Isn't it? Oh, it's fine. No, it's a, so yeah, like, 
So it's kind of like we have to go like back one step, but uh, we've, we've been writing this manifesto for game design that is really more for like designing games for people that hate video games that don't play them and trying to find all the design constraints that could make them more accessible to people that are nor normally interested in the medium. And it tackles both like topics as in what games should talk about and also format like how long a game should be. And if you're interested in it, it's called Rejecta, and you can find it on my uh, website, so activeplay.com slash Rejecta. But I think Matteo was mentioning it because the, the, the idea behind this is that kind of like, as, as Claudia was saying, during those dinners, during all these meetings, all, when we were like arguing about, you know, not arguing, but like sharing experiences of what it's like to work with publishers or like talking with Marina, well, how hard it is to make something like this happen. Uh, it's we figured out that we were doing a lot of work individually that could have been saved if we worked collectively, like just basically sharing the sponsors, sharing the sources, sharing the ideas, sharing the organization, and of course like sharing uh, techniques and things that we can do. So. Uh, we, 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 so do, it, I don't need to tell you how multidisciplinary this medium is and that the fact that just between us we have so many things that we can contribute to project that we know people that are skilled in certain things. We found out that just basically sharing this information would make things much easier. But that only can work because, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think that we all share a vision of what games can be in terms of what they talk about. I don't know if yeah. you want to talk about that. Have a, have a few key words actually that we, we, we decided to share on top of sharing Airbnbs also, which is uh, another, good, another good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a few key words that we kind of gathered around uh, when we started uh, thinking about this uh, collective thing. And one of them for sure is uh, inclusivity and uh, uh, somehow trying to build bridges that can bring games uh, to relate with other disciplines and with other forms of, of, of expression. That's probably one of, 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 uh, of the main points of our in-progress manifesto, I would say, as a, as a game collective. But that is definitely something that we, we really feel there's a, there's, there's a need for. Uh, I, I don't like to, uh, to have, uh, I mean, I would, I would like to relate with people who kind of uh, refuse games just because they think that they're not good at games for instance, and that's, that's, that's a pretty important yeah, point. Inclusivity is definitely one of our, of our value. Um, in relation to Contralto in general, what happened to us is that we realized that, I don't know, probably also part of all our backgrounds and the fact that we are Italian and uh, our historical situation right now and what we are living as people that travel a lot and then come back to uh, our, our country, we, um, we kind of felt that, that it was time for us to, um, to bring a certain specific Italian culture in video games, but also bring video games, certain video games in Italy. Because there is um, a lot of you know, video games in general, they have a lot of stereotypes and uh, we still, all of us, all of us here uh, is trying to fight for something, trying to um, find, convince that people should play more or convince their parents that your job, it's a good job, you know, those kind of things. And, um, but here uh, in Italy, I think that it is important that more um, outside video games um, are uh, with different kind of gameplay or different kind of missions uh, have been uh, must be played by by, uh, by by Italian players. So there is also part of this collective is also related a lot to the fact that uh, it's based in Italy. And, uh, and we want also to um, 
to throw and to connect uh, our work and the work that we are doing, that it's uh, a lot, it has a lot to do with uh, Italian culture, Italian history, uh, uh, and uh, like for example, Wheels of Aurelia, it's a video game that it's um, heavily drenched into uh, the, the Italian contemporary history of, nine, of the 70s. It's, um, so yeah, that's, that's, what we, that's what we are trying to do. And there is also another component, I think, that is, uh, yeah, sure, it's like the culture around us and what we get from the politics and you know, the, 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 the society around us, but I feel that it's something that we haven't talked about a lot, but I've just realized that is a, a lot of us have worked on autobiographical projects, which it, yeah, we, we work on collective identity and autobiographical identity. Uh, and, so. and, Andrea, do you, want, do you want to say something about like, what about get the away and the, the things like how you would feel that that's an example of an Italian game compared to, for example, Alex's uh, memoir? Mm, in which sense? In the I mean, um, like the, the Italian style that we're trying to understand if it's there or not. It's not just um, in, you know, having a game that uses Italian cars and shows the Italian coast, but it's also like, what it is it like for us to be Italian? And uh, is, it, is there anything in our lives that is worth telling and worth talking about? And does that contribute to the spirit of the collective? I mean, I don't know if it's connected to the fact of being Italian, okay. but I think that there is something interesting in the fact that we share maybe these two examples of these two games, Away and uh, the Alex games, is the fact that we want to use games uh, for creating like a kind of connection with people, talking about us about our own stories. And uh, I think that this is another point that maybe it's it's part of our vision, that is this idea of creating connection and identification with people who plays our game. So we want to try every kind of project and thing that we did, I mean, not, not just the autobiographical project, is something that we want to share stories and uh, we want to make people find like a kind of identification with the content of our game. So we want to create meaningful play experience where for meaningful is when people find a kind of connection uh, with uh, the content in the game through play, by playing the game. So they can find something of their self in the game. So this is one maybe of the number of things. That we can. I guess it's not a coincidence that uh, probably the first 100% Contralto project that we, that we had uh, was this uh, workshop uh, that we had uh, uh, the two of us, me, Claudia, together with Alex. Uh, we had a first uh, edition at uh, last uh, MAs festival in Berlin, and then a second iteration of the same uh, workshop uh, at Creative Coast Festival in Karlsham, Sweden. And the title of the workshop was Drawing from Your Identity to Make Unique Games. Uh, so the idea there uh, was, uh, came from when we uh, and, and Alex uh, realized that no matter how uh, apparently, our games were on two opposite sides of, of a spectrum of possible inspiration that you can draw from in order to make your games. Uh, Alex uh, has made uh, Memoir in Code, which is completely biographical game, while uh, me and Claudia, as we are Muesli, are more on the historical side of games. So we made this game about Second World War, another game about uh, Hieronymus Bosch, so it was about Middle Age paintings uh, and stuff like that. So it, it was like, uh, am I drawing from myself? and my personal story or from the history of my country or whatever. But we realized that what we were doing was basically drawing from identity. That was a, a, a very important keyword because identity is both your personal story, the story of your family, uh, but 
at the same time the story of your country, your culture, your subculture, whatever it, it can be. So the idea for, for, for this workshop that we had was uh, uh, try to combine somehow uh, traditional game mechanics. The, ga the, the workshop basically worked like this. We, uh, we chose, uh, we proposed the workshop participants uh, um, a few pretty established, uh, very conventional, traditional game mechanics uh, like uh, racing uh, or city builder, stealth games. Uh, there were quite a few of them. And then we Im invited uh, uh, the, the workshop participants uh, to try to reflect about uh, how the topic was somehow uh, talking to their either personal history or their country's history and try to uh, come up with new game mechanics that could somehow tweak the traditional conventional game mechanics of that genre and in order to make them more personal or more connected uh, to the to their culture and uh, it, it worked I mean it was it was uh, we were uh, pretty pretty happy with, with the outcome of the workshop because it was a total experiment we hadn't actually tested before uh, the edition we had at the maze uh, but really interesting ideas uh, uh, came out of that workshop same happened in, uh, in when we, when we try to experiment with it in, uh, in, uh, in Sweden. And so identity, I guess, that's, that's a very important uh, word for like, somehow building that connection between uh, the game and the player, or the maker of the game, and, uh, and the player, or the, the author of the game, and authorship, yeah. I guess, it's another pretty yeah. important. Yeah, I think it's about like, making games about something we care about, and it doesn't matter if it's our own life or it's our history. So it's like making something about something we care about and try to make also people to care about that topic or that, uh, that thing, the story that we are telling about, we are speaking about. So this is a, a concept that we're also extending to the kind of curation that we're making. So I would say that this kind of thinking also goes into when we are saying something like, uh, why, wh what kind of selection would we have for this festival, or should we, one of the projects that we're working on is curating an online page with games that we recommend, that we think are like a good introduction if you're interested to trying these kind of games. And that's certainly one of the characteristics that we're looking for. And we try to put this into practice, I feel, last year with the Milano Game Festival, and to sh also since I don't know, maybe this is an occasion also to share with you some practical examples of why we made this collective. Maybe we uh, can say a couple of things about the, the, the how Paolo designed the, 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 the games to work on the festival, because we had a really interesting setup with um, games that would auto-run and stop playing all at the same time. And so, but this is like a, a number of, of, of solutions that we put into the, into the festival so that people would feel more like a film festival than a game festival where they had a lot of responsibility towards if whether they wanted to play or not. Do you want to say a couple of things about how we set that up? So <coughs> the festival was desi designed to be like uh, very different from the common way you go to place and try with a game was uh, like a communal experience um, in which you enter this uh, um, uh, very different space. We collaborated with a, um, a director that created this space uh, with a um, what's that? park. The, the tree bark, the corteccia. Um, and these trees in the in, in, in this room, so it's very it's very warm and um, inclusive uh, atmosphere, and uh, we, we 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 were bringing uh, these uh, two people at the time at their table, and um, there, w uh, there was like one uh, computer for two people, and each one has its own uh, uh, headset, so there was uh, like uh, there was the. Um, uh, playing together this game, uh, so uh, they could uh, uh, play with their own time. Uh, everybody was playing the same game at, the, at the, the end of the evening. They could meet the creator and uh, have a chat with them and uh, discuss. So it's like uh, when, you, when you watch a movie and you go out and you talk with your friends, so wh what, do you do? what do you think about the game? 
it's not uh, it was a very um, uh, compact and very design experience for uh, for the people who came there um, we are trying to replicate uh, the, the thing uh, this year maybe hopefully Paolo briefly mentioned designed and I guess that's that's also um, one of the Italian traits of Italian culture that we, we would like to relate with the, the design tradition of Italy and of Milan probably uh, in, uh, in in particular I mean I was I was surprised when uh, uh, I can't remember exactly where, but we had this uh, presentation of a game of ours. Uh, we were in Berlin, I guess. Uh, and after the presentation, the presentation was about uh, uh, like design thinking applied to game design or something like that. Trying to, uh, it, was it was a talk inspired by uh, John Maeda's Laws of Simplicity. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great book about how to design things in the name of, uh, of, of simplicity and uh, after after the talk uh, uh, this this uh, young guy who was in the attendance uh, came and said uh, oh I was um, I, I didn't know about your studio I didn't know where you were from and, and I was like oh there's there's that kind of design like touch in that presentation and then when you said that you are from Milan I realized oh that ma that totally made sense and I was really surprised with that I, I, I had never thought about how we could be perceived uh, as somehow connected to the design tradition of, uh, of, uh, of Italy and again of Milan in particular and due to the, your specific yeah. background in like graphic uh, design uh, yeah. I think okay that's for those who are Italian I'm talking now I'm doing like two separate like talks now for those who are Italian you know what the Italian situation about video games is for those who are not um, you need to you have a conception about a certain made in Italy that um, that's like embrace things like as we mentioned like cars and fashion and food and uh, and everything sounds so glamorous and everything sounds so like uh, uh, polished and things like this so you might think oh maybe they're very good also in game design but in Italy right now there is a certain situation where for example from an academia standpoint, we are still really, really just like board, like like there there are just not even enough game design courses, not even enough game development uh, places. And when you talk to those design environments, like things like museums, or you talk to other kind of uh, design related um, uh, fields. When you say to them games, they just like say, "What are they? We uh, we we don't know what games are, and we don't know what to do with games. Uh, we know Super Mario, we know Razzle, and uh, Candy Crush, and things like this, but we don't. We never thought that there is a game design field to study in Italy. So as an as an Italian designer, you feel like, oh my God, there is a very huge, big like gap between what the people outside perceive about the made in Italy and the design and the fact that in Italy, the word game does not, is not part of the design disciplines that a designer can study. So for the past three years, we kind of worked really hard to enter inside many different academies and uh, fashion academies, graphic design, um, festivals that talks about literature to kind of knock into their doors and say, listen, it's time that also here in Italy we start to have a sort of made in Italy about video games, a sort of voice, contralto, it's it's like giving a voice, but yeah, a sort of um, 
etiquette label, I don't like labels, but yeah, some sort of container that starts to say, okay, this is where people should look at, not just like our work, but we, we are planning to collect more works to understand that there is a culture of games also in this country. Um, um, one last thing that I want to ask us, and especially Nicolo, since you mentioned Contra Contralto as a name, it's a name related to voice and related to music, is something about music. And one of the projects that we almost all of us worked on is Wheels of Aurelia, and that game has a very weird soundtrack that is not worked on in the same way that game soundtracks are usually worked on, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how we worked on the soundtrack for Wheels of Aurelia. Uh, what was strange about that soundtrack is that uh, Pietro asked me not to, comp not to compose something for a video game, <laughs> but to compose something like an, an ordinary album that could be played in a 70s radio car. And so that's how I did it. I started a, a research. She, he gave me uh, some reference uh, from the progressive Italian uh, music scene of the 70s that drew from, uh, actually, from uh, England, uh, the English music scene. And uh, I found out uh, some of the roots of some of the uh, foundations of, of this kind of music, which brought from symphonic classical music, which brought from uh, rock and roll, which brought uh, from uh, uh, baroque structures, but also pop. Uh, it was really a mixture. And uh, that's what I did. I studied this to, to uh, recreate an, an immersive feeling also uh, in the music so that all the game could work as a, as a whole. And uh, the result was actually an album. <laughs> so with songs and lyrics. We, we, work, we wrote lyrics about the time period yeah. that could work as songs in the game that would also talk about kind of like the same topics that the characters would go through and that was a very new uh, experience and also it was like a massive part of the budget and like huge part of the game <laughs> and that's something that we I, I personally as a game designer it never happened to me it never occurred to me that it would could be so important and I'm not even sure if I would personally recommend it to any of you to invest that much in the soundtrack but it certainly was necessary to give an Italian identity to, yeah. to that game and I think it's probably the, the most interesting part of the game. Yeah and it's really also kind of... Thank you. <laughs> no, as the Definitely the most interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, as the lyrics are in Italian, uh, maybe to uh, foreign uh, persons, it would uh, be nice and also fun to go and uh, translate this text because it really has to do something to do with the game and with the, with the narrative part, with the storytelling. Yeah, I mean, seriously, like the music in Wheels of Aurelia, I think that's a very good, uh, being so specific, it's a very good, yeah, it's a very good example uh, of that kind of connection with, a, with, with an identity, uh, an, an Italian identity, because the uh, Italian prog music is, is a, a pretty important piece of like the whole international rock music uh, on an international basis, but it's unique and specific to Italy. Uh, the way it, it, uh, it, uh, it, it actually works. And so it's not about like trying to connect to a uh, generic, wide, broad hi Italian history or Italian culture, but trying to connect with specific Italian subcultures, for instance, and I think prog music uh, is, uh, is, a, is a very good example, uh, hmm. uh, uh, exactly because it's super specific, uh, super narrow, and super focused uh, uh, exactly on that kind of thing. Yes, it is. So oh, I I, th I think we're done, but what we, what we will do, even if we're not allowed to, is ask if you guys have any questions. Otherwise, you're free to go. Does any anyone anyone want to ask? Yes, Paolo. What what's the deal with the logo? Yeah, you go. Well, we want to. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a gesture to say a lot of things, even stealing money. No, I think it was like, uh, it was related also. We wanted to give, we wanted to be a little bit unconventional with the logo. And because people say the Italian people talk with hands, we thought that the hand could have been like uh, the nice contralto uh, gesture. It's also a gesture that you see in singers like, uh, like that. So, yeah. If you don't like it, I kill you, okay? <laughs> no, 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 seriously. I'm not joking. I'm joking. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Oh, no. What, what? Shh. Yeah. With beers. Yeah, we exchange beers. <laughs> We're not at that step yet. We like we don't have like a, a, a commercial project that is inside the uh, the collective that we would pitch to publishers and deal with them. But it's more of a matter of each of us has experiences with publishers, and we can tell each other like, oh, you should pitch the game like this. It's like helping each other pitch to publishers and manage the, our single studio's relationship with the publisher. And that's the kind of like stuff that we want to learn, put together, and then share back with the community of Italian developers and designers. Cool, thanks.